I usually hate killing an unarmed man. Cold-blooded murder is a filthy business. A man tires of being executed. But in your case, I feel nothing. Just like you. But then again, there's no point living if you can't feel alive. Huh? Hey! Drop the gun! Keep away, Colonel! He's an imposter. Dr. Arkoff is 63 years old. This is your imposter. Along with the man outside on the plane. They're stealing the bomb. I said drop it! This is 007. Claude Rudolph is talking to the podcast. And you know me, I'm the villain in the James Bond movie. And I said to Pierce Brosnan, who is playing at this time the Bond, hey, Mr. Bond, by the way, don't try it with this girl. You won't laugh it. She is called Christmas, but there is no Christmas present for you. Bye. Thank you. This is God. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so good. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> they love that. The fans will love that. <laughs> oh. Really, Double S. Well. Good, uh, good afternoon to everybody. This is uh, the Really 007 podcast, and we're here with uh, Mr. Claude Oliver Rudolph, who, of course, was uh, Colonel Akakivich, if I've got that right, the pronunciation, in, uh, behind, yeah. <laughs> in, in The World Is Not Enough. Uh, and that is one of our favourite Bond films. It's one of John's most talked about films that he's trying to big up to, to be regarded as one of the greats. So we're really going to big that up today as well. So, yes... Uh, thank you for joining us, and if you're new to Really 007, you can catch all our interviews on our YouTube channel, uh, including many actors and people involved from behind the camera of the Bond films, and you can also listen to our episodes on iTunes and Spotify, so do please subscribe, leave a lovely review, if that's possible, and social media, we're on all forms, such as Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, just look up Really 007 Pod, and you can get joining in on the debates. So with me today, as I've already mentioned, I have regular contributor and massive Pierce Brosnan, the World Is Not Enough fan, it's John Kell. So good good afternoon to you, John. Good afternoon. It's so great to be here. So excited to talk to you, Claude, today. It is. It's, it's an absolute pleasure. And now Claude has been acting for over 40 years, which is no mean feat. And he's played a huge variety. Of oh, no, no, no. I must... Uh, oh, go on. Uh, 50 years. In, 50 in years. November, well, go, yeah. In November... I got my anniversary of 50 years on stage and in service. Wow. I started, I started as a young boy. Well, yeah, I was going to ask you, how, how did it all start then? It must, must, must be very young then. It's, it's like in a bad movie or in a good movie. I was uh, in Bochum. This is not a capital of media. It's not Zurich. It's not London. It's not Frankfurt or Hamburg. It's a <laughs> working class town like Leeds or Liverpool. And we have a lot of steel and coal. And uh, then came Opel, like Vauxhall in England. And it is a town, uh, working class hero town. But we had in the early 70s, a very famous uh, director from England, Peter Sardek. He was uh, even today in the Wikipedia uh, assumed as the greatest director after the Second World War in theater. And I was lucky, uh, I was crossing around the alley uh, in front of the theater and a very famous film director called Werner Schroeter um, saw me and asked me if I have the pleasure or the idea to play in the theater. I said, yeah, why not? How much money? And he said, 12 <laughs> marks an evening. And 12 marks were a lot of money because in these days I got 35 marks a month from my parents. So that means three times on the theater, I got more than my, my monthly uh, wage from my parents. So I decided to start my theater career. <laughs> and then 
Yeah, and then Peter Zadig uh, was really the greatest guy and he had connections all over theater and English directors, American directors, Lee Strasberg were coming to Bochum, you must imagine that, and very famous actors uh, and the great Fassbinder is also very known in Great Britain, uh, uh, um, was, was there directing pieces and brought his whole uh, company and family uh, to Bochum. And so uh, I was very lucky by God's help to get in the province such a big start. And then uh, by the time uh, other great uh, impresarios or producers uh, heard of my little name, I was tiny, famous. And then they called me to gay to, to get um, to Munich to run a Werner Fassbinder's theater. It's called Anti Theater. And I asked, when should I come? It was Thursday. And they said to me, yeah, cool, come on uh, Saturday. And I was Friday already in Munich. And I had 300 marks, a stolen uh, uh, Kashmir coat, and a Ray Ban, and my shepherd dog. This was all I had in Munich. And then we made a fine premiere of, of a Gene Genie piece. A uh, big scandal in Munich because I was smoking such a big joint on stage, not a real <laughs> joint of 30 centimeters. That means, I don't know, in inches, I don't know, half a meter. And in Munich was very conservative this time. And it was a big scandal. And all the newspapers from left to right were writing about the big scandal. Claude Rudolph starting in the first minute piece. So from this day on, and this is not, it's not a fairy tale. It's real truth. From this time, uh, the producers of all the world were coming into this little first minute theater. And, and, and really, I could choose my, my, my roles. And it was like the Sex Pistols career in, in England was my career as a punk actor in Germany. And it's so crazy to imagine. I, I, I always, after the performance, the assistant director came to me and said, Claude, Claude, there's another producer from England or from Sweden or I, I don't know. I said, yeah, let him say, I take a shower and then I came drinking a tea with him in the cafe. So <laughs> I had a big mouth. And I was always, um, yeah, uh, Mr. Big. So, and uh, quite a character. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I don't have to act. Like, like Strasbeck said, don't act, please, just be. And then in these years, I'm, I'm telling about uh, 1978, 1979, uh, I did my first movie with Werner Schroeder, and it was at the moment. From start off, the winner of the Golden Bear Berlin. You must yeah. imagine my first movie, first winning Golden Bear in Berlin. And then I was uh, playing on theater, and then came The Boat, the famous The Boat, you know? Yeah. It's yeah. Germany's biggest film ever. Wherever you are, in Trondheim, in Norwegia, or in South Africa, everybody knows The Boat. Everybody, everybody. I got invitation from the director Peterson, who uh, passed away last yeah, week, yeah. REP. I, I should go to the Bavaria studios at 11 uh, in the morning. And I had no clock at this time. And I asked Fassbinder, could I sleep uh, in, the, in the surrounding of the theater? Yeah, 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 no problem. Because uh, it was nearer to the Bavaria studio. So the other day, uh, uh, I was awake and looked looked uh, at, at the watch in the cafe. Oh, 2211. Fuck. So, no toothbrushing, no hair combing. I, I jumped into my car, passed every red light in Munich to get to the studios. And then I rushed on the second floor. Um, there was the, the, uh, the, the casting show. And um, every actor I knew uh, from television or from cinema were already waiting there. And in these days you could smoke and everybody was smoking. It was a, a, a blue fuck 
of smoke. <laughs> and I, I, I don't like to sit uh, in the knee of actors because they are nervous and they're, they're talking. And uh, so I, I, I sat a little away around the corner and I had a big clock like, like, like uh, in the train station in front of my eyes. And I said, okay, I've got a bit of time. And then <laughs> I fall asleep and I wake up. <laughs> Two o'clock, nobody there. Only the 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 the, 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 the blue smoke of, of the cigarettes were there. And I said to myself, "Oh God, why had I uh, such an idiot to to make a party yesterday to be uh, tired today? The big chance of my life." And I, I knocked at the first door, it was a big, big, long floor, and I knocked the first door, nobody there. I knocked the second door, nobody there. I said, oh gosh, my God, I'm so stupid. And then I heard some um, uh, mourning and growling behind another door. And I was knocking there, come on! And then there was sitting a director uh, in the big, uh, in a big, um, long, long hall, and uh, around his head were big blue smoke of Marlboro cigarettes. And this was Wolfgang Peterson. And he said to me, uh, without regarding the, the casting officer, he, he, he regarded me and he said, this is the way I imagined Ario before. Come on. And then, then he took really? 10 uh, stories, uh, and he gave the stories to me. <laughs> this was my casting <laughs> in the boat. And wow. after this, uh, the story is told in, uh, in every country. Uh, the, the, from this on, I was I was I was on a on, on, a, on a, not on a ghost train, but on a um, uh, roller coaster. Yeah. Uh, from <laughs> this day on, when the film started worldwide. Uh, I hadn't to do nothing, no more. I didn't know, need no agency or manager or whatever. Uh, it runs and runs and runs and runs to today, 50 years. And God, thanks, thanks God, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's so wow. famous that we, we, even in England, we refer to it as dust boards. It, isn't, it hasn't even yeah. been translated. We don't even need to translate it. And certainly what you mentioned Wolfgang Peterson. And it's really sad, obviously, that he died recently. But what was, yeah. he like a, what was he like as a director and as a gentleman? He was a pro. He knew what he was doing, the first mm. thing. And he always said, handcraft before art. Then we were shooting a, a, a normal check. And then he said, now we're doing an extra check for Hollywood. And then we did. So everybody <laughs> of the team knew how hard it will be. But that we uh, later on got the chance of six Oscar nominations, nobody yeah. thought about it. Mm. Yeah. Did you realize it was going to be such a massive film? Because obviously not many German films go on to be huge in America. So and I only know uh, our, our film. I made some American movies that were, that were even worse. But uh, nobody, no even a an, an, an native uh, American director had such a, success line as Peterson. Peterson had seven huge box office records in a line. Yeah, it got bigger. This, this, is, well, this is German, 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 German quality like Mercedes-Benz or Porsche. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's like, I, I tell you a story. Uh, when I was always driving uh, English sports cars, uh, Aston Martin, Jack, uh, you know. And then I was oh. coming to London uh, and my driver um, uh, uh, fetched me up at the at, at the at, at Stansted, and I was very disappointed. He he was catching me up with a white Mercedes. He said, "Hey, why not a Jack?" And this time I was driving a, 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 a JK twelve cylinders. And he said, "Maybe the best car in the world." <laughs> <laughs> but also he was very proud that I'm privately at, uh, at home. I'm driving a Jack. Okay, oh well, <laughs> British. <laughs> classy. That is classy yeah. Since then, I mean, goodness me, what going into that as well, and the whole Hollywood thing, and you, yeah. you mentioned Wolfgang Peterson, there's, 
Jürgen Prochnow and other people. Yeah, and, and our cameraman. Life, our you know? cameraman did did uh, also blockbusters like uh, Robocop and yeah. things like that. And yeah. another friend of mine, who was was uh, at Fassbinder's, he's even the most popular cameraman in America. Um, uh, Mickey Ballhaus, he had uh, about 20 great Hollywood cigars, which Scorsese and everybody. Right? Michael Ballhaus. Wow. Yeah. Pretty impressive, isn't it? <laughs> and two of the Fassbinder team were the villain in James Bond. Before me, it was Godfrey Joan. Yes, yes. There, there was wow. a lot of Germans, wasn't there? There was Gottfried John in Goldeneye. Then there was Gotts Otto. Uh, he's, not, he's, not, he's, he's, he's an extra. He's not an extra. <laughs> well, we've spoken. No, really. Him, so, he's, so. He's, <laughs> he's, he's not in the in the same class. He's not. He's not playing in in the first division. You must. Yeah, you must imagine. <laughs> well, now, there's only one line. This is this is the old Gerd Frobe from Goldfinger. Yeah. And then yeah. this is Kurt Jürgens, but Kurt, Kurt Jürgens Austrian. Yeah. Nobody knows it. It's not a no. German. It's an Austrian. Then Gottfried Jon, and then Claude. We, I was looking as well. There's, um, there's of course Walter Gotel who played Gogol in I think five Bond films. I think he moved to Britain early, but he was born in Germany. And then there's Christoph Waltz, who's is he half Austrian. Mm -hmm. He's an Austrian. Austrian, not a German. <laughs> a lot of Germans get cast as uh, Nazis, don't they? And Gotts Otto was telling us he's he's had to play loads of Nazis, but I know you you've written a book about the Holocaust. Well, that's ama absolutely amazing. Could you tell us a bit about that? I was uh, in love with the daughter of a very famous German Jewish producer, maybe the greatest, who invented um, about I think two hundred movies or something like that. And uh, I was in love with the girl, and the daddy said, "Okay, uh, there's no problem to get a marriage, but uh, you must." Um, three steps uh, come over. I said, okay, tell me. Uh, the one is you must change to Jewish uh, religion. He said, no problem. The second is you must divorce from your wife. I said, okay, I do it. And the third thing is you must come to the um, Christian Democrats. It's like like the Tories in, in your country. I said, oh no, I, I can't hmm. do it. So uh, the laugh separated <laughs> doesn't exist anymore, but I promised I write this uh, novel and I wrote this novel. And in this novel, this is um, uh, the absolute outstanding in comparison to every other's history. We know from the school and from documentaries, etc., from the BBC and so on, so on, so on. This book is not about the poor Jews who are going into the oven and into the gas. No, they are heroes and revolutionary. And in the end, they really got the last uh, historical. The, got the last ship from Portugal was which neutral, neutral in these days, the last ship to uh, New York City. And finally, they reached uh, um, the Statue of Liberty and one of the boys says to the other, mm, uh, do you smell the smell of freedom? And the other said, no, it smells uh, too fish. It smells fishy. <laughs> Um, wow, you, uh, I, I mean, I couldn't believe it. Obviously, looking into all you've done, you've you directed, yeah, you write and direct film Dirty Sky yeah. as well, yeah. yeah. And what's it like to direct them? Well, how does it how, how do you come into that as an actor? I was um, actually I was starting as a director, but I lost my money. <laughs> oh, right, uh, and, and then Werner Schroeder said to me, oh, no problem, the, 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 the depths. We, 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 we will uh, kill away. And then he made me to an actor, but actually I started as a director. And then during the directing my first days, when I was a, a teen, not a twin, uh, I told you before, it was like a, uh, in the punk days. Um, I had no, I ran out of money. And so we couldn't uh, get the sound to the film. I couldn't afford the studio or whatever. So I, I was, to, in these days are already on festivals throughout uh, North and Australia. So I made uh, uh, art of this poor situation. And I said to the um, um, uh, producers of the festivals, um, I said, okay, uh, this is new art. Let me call it post-punk Dadaism. And we do a live performance, like in a theater, like in an opera, 
with all my actors and all the ingredients and all the techniques live in the performance. And they said, yeah, that's a great idea. And I got the first prize. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you probably so, invented that, didn't you? Yeah, you yeah, did, it's crazy. And you, then you um, the musical, but I lost no. a lot of money in these days. Oh, right, okay. Uh, 5,000 marks for a 15 year old boy. And uh, so wow. I had um, uh, for a certain time um, to, 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 I had to, to stop my directing career <laughs> and had to begin my acting career. Right. But always, when I, when I, when I had uh, a bit of money, um, I said, no, I, I, can't, I can't be an actor. And, and to be told, go from left to right. I, I'm, I'm not a puppet in a string. I hate it. So I had to do a directing again. And, mm. uh, so in the meantime, uh, I think I, I, I made 20 movies or yeah, 20 round about it and produced a lot of movies of young artists. Crazy. That must be crazy. This is, this is my important criteria. Um, uh, I don't like mainstream and it's not of my interest. Crazy people, crazy movies, um, even crazy theater. For instance, I was, I was the first director to direct um, Clockwork Orange uh, as a theater piece in Germany. You know, oh, wow. the, the, yeah, yeah, the very famous movies, one of my fav favorite yeah, movies. So good, yeah. And, 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 and in, this, in these days, uh, Malcolm McDowell was my favorite actor. Oh, Absolutely. Yeah. Also on theater stage or on musical stage and opera stage. I make always crazy things. I'm I'm fixed to crazy things. You must you must you must imagine my my favorite artist um, since now 50 years uh, is is uh, are the Sex Pistols and Clash and from America Iggy Pop. There's nothing yeah. changed. And when mm. I was a young actor, fast spinner. I, I wrote, I'm not tattooed at all. I, I wrote with a big adding on my left breast, Iggy Pop, on my wrist, Sex Pistol. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Much permanence than a tattoo. Yeah, yeah. And, and even, even 50 years later on, oh, nobody uh, was talking in, in 2015 about punk anymore. But I, I was in these days uh, the, the chef of the feuilleton of the, of the Russian television. And I caught my my uh, talk show clash. Yeah, yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. Is that why it's called that? Right. Okay. Yeah. For Russia today. Wow. Yeah. You've done presenting as well. <laughs> Incredible. Unbelievable. <laughs> no, I, I mean, I just I've just seen like you know Motorhead, Metallica, Scorpions, Ramstein. Yeah. Yeah. Unbelievable Amazing. collaborations. Yeah. Yeah, yeah music. Music is my first love. Yeah, I always, uh, I, I always wrote the soundtrack to my, to my record, to my films, and uh, all, all the, the verses and all the lines are, are always uh, uh, homemade by Claude. And I wrote songs for for punk bands and for Herbert Grönemeyer. He's very famous in Germany. I don't know in England, but in Germany, he's one of the top singers. And we were uh, uh, classmates. We know each other since we were 10. He was, he was the, 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 um, the press lieutenant in the boat. This is Herbert. Uh, and since then we are together. And uh, so music was very important in my life. And therefore it wasn't a big um, step towards uh, the, the musical stage and, and the opera stage. I did Mozart. Uh, and, and I did, I did, I did Beethoven, oh, yeah. and I did Judy Garland. I, I met the German wow. first performance of the musical Judy Garland from the Broadway. I did it two times in 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 Theater Bonn and in the and the Schloss Theater. Uh, so uh, I'm very keen to music, and uh, therefore it was not a big step to do now because. Now we 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 having the 40th anniversary of the boat, and um, I knew you '96 uh, from the soundtrack of the boat. There were the famous composers of the worldwide techno hit the boat, uh, and we know since 30 years. And uh, we did some things before, uh, after the death of Klaus Kinski. We did a double um, uh, album about Klaus Kinski, and then uh, we had. Um, uh, the soundtrack of Jack Nazreen, uh, uh, Trip of Death. Um, and then they called me in February uh, last year 
um, if I could imagine to do with them 20,000 leagues beneath the sea, I said, yeah, 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 sure, sure. That makes sense for me because you are called U96. I was really going uh, uh, on board, what, which was called an U96. I was at the board aerial. You were doing something. That makes sense. Do now Captain Nemo and the Nautilus, which is the first U boat in the world. This it's absolute uh, a, a passion for me and a passion for you, and we do it together. And so it functioned. That was the idea. And the idea became bigger and bigger. Then the planetarium, I don't know the word in English, planetarium. We are looking at the stars yeah, yeah, called yeah. planetarium. Yeah, yeah, um, that's the word. They, they called us if he, if he could imagine to do a version 3D full dome. I said, yeah, why not? Why not? Why not? And uh, then we made it and, and I'll show it to you. Uh, you can go out, uh, you can see them also if you, if you go yeah. to Planetarium Hamburg. But this is another version. This is, this is only a 3D full dome <laughs> version. We did, we did for the Planetarium. And I'm, and I'm looking for going uh, uh, through Europe with this version. Maybe even we come into London or and Paris and so. Oh the, wow! The, int the interest of the of the planetariums, um, how's it called? Do how's it called? Uh, men who, who leads the planetarium, how's it called? Director of planetarium? I don't know. Yeah, 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 okay. yeah. yeah it's very, yeah. very I big. Can you just uh, lift up the shoulder leaflet again? We're yeah, just yeah. That, that, oh, yeah, amazing! The two thousand so, C is it? Yeah. Oh, it looks so good. So yeah. That's, that's a musical you're doing based on the Jules Verne. Uh, oh. Now this is this. This is this is this. This is this. This is the musical. And right. This is the right. planetarium show. Ah, right. So, uh, yeah. so good. So it's like an interactive experience. Yeah, fantastic, unbelievable. Oh. And the name we we we, we uh, bought it or stolen it from the Manix experience, the Jules right. Verne experience. <laughs> And uh, we are three, uh, also like Henrik was three, three guys, and we were all three guys, the two from U96 and Claude, and we are called the Jules Verne Experience. Unbelievable. Brilliant. So good. I've, I've I, seen you I, on tour soon, aren't you, for that, but love to see it. Yeah, incredible. Yeah, we learned in the, in, the, in, the, in the days of the 70s, you can make a very loud sound with three guys, taste the three, uh, Jim Hennig the three, Motorhead the three. You can yeah. be very loud with three guys. <laughs> oh, you can. <laughs> so how does that That's... how does that work when you've got so you've got the band and then you've got you? How does that work with the audience? What do they see? Should I be honest? Yeah. Yes, please, please be honest. And nobody wants to hear techno anymore. Nobody wants to see the old boys from U96. Uh, there's a rumor in the public just before my first appearance on stage. And then they really flashed and I'm coming. Um, it's, uh, you must imagine, uh, it's like, I, I said, I said for Pierre, I said, this is a mixture from Hollywood and Wagner. And so it is. Yeah, yeah. So it is. Sounds unbelievable. <laughs> sounds, yeah, it sounds incredible. We have now two examples of the of the following album. The album is coming in, I don't know, September or something like that. But we made two single versions. And the one is even, we, we, we had a deal with Donovan, with the old Atlantis song. It lasted three months till we got all the rights and overrides and he must must control my, my German text and so on. But in the end, we, we finished uh, and we got the rights to do the new Atlantis version. We, we put it on uh, uh, directly. You can listen to it on, on uh, YouTube. And the other is coming, it's absolutely new, what was coming on Monday. Uh, we did Me Nemo. These are the oh, two yeah. releases, the two pre releases before the album starts. Are you, are so everybody in the world can, can listen free yeah. to it. Oh you, wow! Are you Captain Nemo then? In the, in sure. the, of course you are. Sure. Yes. <laughs> and I said, I said as a joke in the, in the, in the newspapers, I said, so my whole life, uh, for forty years, I'm in the in the navy. I started uh, uh, as a, uh, for, in, in in the diesel area in the U-boat, and forty years later, I'm a commander. 
Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Made it Amazing. <laughs> That's incredible. Now, as a, I was going to ask you, as a German actor, do you sort of have to accept that you're going to play lots of different roles with different languages? So can you, do you have to speak lots of different languages as a German actor? Normally, no. Normally, no, because a German actor does not make international movies. <laughs> well, you, um, yeah, but for me, it's a little bit easier because I was I was belonged uh, in my family. My my family's half French, half German, and I was brought up at my at my grandma in in France in Rennes. It's near of of the Champagne, and on the other end, I was an exchange student in England, and oh, right. uh, I was shooting in Italy. I had a, I had a girlfriend in Italy also. So uh, it was more familiar, familiar to me to speak in other languages. But normally a German actor has very, very big problem because of his accent. And, uh, it is, for a German tongue, it's very different to roll in other speeches. And then they can, can speak an R, uh, not even an R in Italiano. Uh, uh, they can speak uh, a TH in English. It's very uh, problematic with German actors. Well, you've done all right so far, haven't you? Dear me. So well. <laughs> so well. Yeah. So, yeah, also as well, you, you've done some dubbing of famous films, haven't you? And, and various things like no, that. No, only you one. Dubbed. Oh, right. Only okay. One, only one. Uh, that is not my art. How's it called? It makes a movie run into the cinemas. The, the, the company, how's it called? The distributor? Distributor, yeah. yeah. The American distributor wanted. Wanted by hard Claude Rudolph. He is the German Mickey Rook. And I said, okay, I do it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I like Mickey Rook. It's no problem. Um, and I made it good because of my God's talent. And um, we, we were gaining the German dubbing prize. And then yeah. the film made it well at the German box office also. That was the wrestler, really? which mm -hmm. he, he was robbed of an yeah. Oscar, really, Mickey Rook. Though. Very much so. But I'd, I'd love to hear your version of it. Are you, are you, <laughs> are you a similar yeah, kind of character to Mickey Rourke? Because he's a yeah, yeah, he's cool. My version is cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah but if you do something with love, then you're very similar. Then, then it's okay. And he, he he was a boxing. I was a boxer. Yeah. So yeah. that's very similar. This is that's a good idea from the American distributor. Yeah. It's not always shit is coming from Hollywood. <laughs> No, it's even, it's, even, it's even coming some shit from England. I was, I yeah. was <laughs> at the beginning of the year, I was discussing very often with Jonathan Glazer. I like Jonathan Glazer. He did one of my oh, favorite yeah. movies, The Sexy Beast. Yes. And I was very yeah. happy that he, that he phoned me and we were talking about this new project, blah, 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 etc. Yeah, but then we couldn't combine getting about the figure. It's a Nazi movie, and he wanted me to play the Nazi not as a as a brutal, um, arrogant, and uh, dumb, and deaf uh, subject. Um, and I said, no, Nazis are tough, damp, and brutal, and ugly subjects. So we didn't come together. Oh, but wow. I think the movie the movie didn't um, finance uh, wasn't financed, um, and so uh, it's not very. Uh, um, I'm, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not very twist. I'm not very sad about it because the, a movie which not comes to the cinema uh, doesn't exist and so forth. But um, I like Jonathan Glazer and even even in, in my Michael Aptit, who he even passed away. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. Michael yeah. Aptit yeah. was also doing a favorite movie of mine, the last movie of Lee Marvin, Gorky Park. Yeah, and yeah. Yeah, and I think something in the stars or uh, in the heaven um, rules it and controls it that I'm coming together with all these artists I like very much. Uh, I don't know if it's true, uh, but uh, I have the feeling that uh, it is like this. Amazing. So, Claude, you mentioned Michael Apted, and obviously yeah. he directed The World Is yeah. Not Enough. I'd love to you just to share a bit of your experience on set with him and how you found him as a director, the influence he had on your character and the film itself. Uh, Michael is a gentleman through and through, and we had a very famous director of photography, Adrian Biddle, I think it was yeah. Oscar winning. 
um, who made the alien or something like this. Very yeah. crazy. <laughs> yeah. And I even uh, liked Barbara Broccoli very much. And I thought uh, the, the company's name, Eon, was something to do with the old Greeks. Uh, Eon <laughs> means a century of gold. And I said, no, <laughs> it means everything or nothing. Because my dad uh, and, his, and his kumpel, uh, uh, Harry B. Salzman, they uh, loaned themselves $50,000 to buy the rights from Ian Fleming. And that was the fortune. Uh, uh, either it happens or neither not. And therefore, everything or nothing. Nothing to do with the Greeks and the Roman philosophy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then Michael uh, asked me, there was no casting at all. Uh, oh, right. I, was, I was invited to London to the Ian production, Kensington Park or whatever. Um, and then uh, there were the Michael, then Michael Wilson, the co-producer, then Barbara Broccoli, the cameraman, and Debbie McWilliams, um, who does since 30 years the Bond cast. Yeah, yeah. And they were watching me and I'm watching back. And we watched each other for three or five minutes. And then Michael asked me, Claude, you're an expert in martial arts. Could you explain me the difference between karate and Muay Thai, Thai boxing? So oh, come on, Michael, I do no, no harm. <laughs> and I said, and karate is like this. We stop in front of the face of our opponent. And Thai boxing means we get a foot. OK, Claude, thank you, thank you. You see us in November. <laughs> <laughs> this was the casting. He'd wanted to know that all his life. <laughs> <laughs> He would have killed us all. Did you speak to him? Yeah, but he's no atomic scientist. I suppose you were the one who allowed him down. You had me. But I knew you couldn't uh, shoulder the responsibility. Gosh. Gosh. Now, without any further interruptions, let's proceed. Yet, there are too many new faces around here, including yours. The bomb doesn't move until I am satisfied. Hey, all of you, to the service, now! Goodbye, goodbye! Yes, is a fine guy, but I hate, and he's a really idiot, and he's a dwarf. Uh, he had this, uh, I don't know, I don't remember his name, and he was an idiot, uh, who played the Renard. Uh, he's oh, very, really? Robert yeah, Carlyle? Uh, uh, Robert he was, Carlyle. Uh, he was yeah, shy, no, and he was uh, he was afraid of me because of my physics and so And then one scene, I touched him, and then he go to the director, ah, he touched me in the scene. I don't like it. <laughs> well, there's one bit in it where he he chucks like some papers into your chest, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did he do it hard deliberately to to annoy you? Yeah, yeah. I I wasn't allowed to touch him, but he touched me then. Oh wow! Yeah. <laughs> wow. I was going to ask because he he's yeah. he's the one who shoots you. I'm afraid, Claude. Yeah. <laughs> well, what? <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, a lot of people do say that though. He is quite small as a as a main baddie. Yeah, because Electra is taller than him. He's the, the, the main baddie. The fighting baddie. sequence between Piers and him is a, is a, it's like in a, in a Walt Disney funny movie. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, people do complain like that that he's bigged up as a as a big big villain, but then when you see him, you think Pierce could have him, couldn't he? You don't, Pierce could beat him up easily. <laughs> you, you never got a fight scene in it, unfortunately, yourself. Unfortunately, unfortunately, no, 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 no. <laughs> I, was, I, was, <laughs> I, was, I was really, I was really, I must tell you a story. When I was a child, uh, there was a gym, the first James Bond I, I, I've seen was uh, uh, Goldfinger or Dr. No, or Dr. No, I think. And the film was beginning, it was coming a duck. Is swimming and on the beach the duck is coming over. Yeah, yeah. Then there's a guy in a in a in a in a, in a, in a, in a, in a diver suit and he he un, unchanged diver suit and had a had a white jacket and a and a and a tuxedo on and this this was Hong Kong. Yeah. The old boy. This is not the action movie. 
the, 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 the worst action scenes and fighting sequence in the world are done by Roger Moore. This is like uh, an, a grandpa who has very um, problems with his back um, and, uh, and, it, and, yeah. and then I, I watched the, the fighting sequences uh, at my James Bond um, and it, you can't imagine the difference between reality and film. Film is a lie. And it's not like Godard said, uh, film is reality, is truth 24 times a second. No, film is lie 24 times a second. Because right. in movie, it's like this, is Piers Bonin is, is saving uh, uh, this, this, um, this, this girl. This is Christmas the actual Jones. <laughs> <laughs> the ex-wife of his American actor, Denise Mark Sheen, of the Charlie Sheen, the ex-wife. Oh, right. Oh, yeah. yeah. He's yeah. Richard. Denise Richard. Yeah. And he's yeah. saving her. And they jump in into a hell 20 meters down. Yeah. And they were safe. So in reality, they were jumping over a table 80 centimeters. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, so this is, this is <laughs> actually real, yeah. You've got to be an actor, though, haven't you? You've got to show that it. You've got to show it to the audience that it looks eighty meters. Yeah, yeah. I, I, last time I was in Berlin, I had a, in May. I had a show. Uh, there was a grow. There was a great uh, coming together. I was key speaker as a macho, as a villain. So, uh, and they asked me um, before the show begins. Yeah, what, what, what's your theme? Uh, I said, uh, okay, I tell you something. Mm, from Bochum to Boat and Bond. Nobody has waited for me. I said, oh, this is, this is interesting. This is thrilling. So I told him uh, the story of my life. And uh, even all the jokes I knew from the reality of film behind the scene. And uh, the people won't believe you if you're telling the truth. They won't believe it. <laughs> so otherwise, you see what happens if uh, it is not professional handled, like in the last movie of, of uh, in America, like like um, uh, here of the actor who, who killed the camera girl and and, oh, yeah. and the production designer, Alan uh, Baldwin, yeah, yeah, Baldwin, yeah, in the Baldwin movie. So you see, and then I remembered, yeah, the son of Bruce Lee was also killed. Yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, on the other hand. America says always everything is assured. We got the best insurance companies. And uh, if you eat soft ice uh, and you got a stomach pain, you can make a uh, process $2 million and so on. But in the movies, they are shooting themselves with real guns. Uh, it's, not, it's so crazy for me. Movie is crazy. And then you see English films, which are from, from the handcraft, the best films in the world. But if you see how they do it, you must act laugh. It's like in the kindergarten. Have you have you a word for kindergarten? Yeah, we know we reception use that word. Yeah. or kindergarten. We yeah. do use the word kindergarten, yeah. It's like it and always is done in the cutting room. Yes, of course. This is this is a phenomenon. <laughs> That's a real crap. Yeah. I pulled the plutonium out of the one inside. You can detonate the triggers now. Okay. Look, our IDA physicist. Don't bother. Not interested in man. Take my word for it. This year we decommissioned four test sites. Not even a glimmer. Are you here for a reason? Or are you just hoping for a glimmer? Can I ask about, so obviously uh, Charlie Sheen's wife, Denise Richards, you're yeah. seen with her. You have the line where it kind of, infers that your character had tried it on previously with her and stuff. What was she like to work with? I didn't know her. And I asked her in the, in the wardrobe, I said, tell me uh, the last movies you did. I said, eh, Wild Things. Ah, okay. Well, I've never seen oh, Wild it. Things, yeah, yeah. And, and, and I haven't seen it. But she was pretty and okay. She, yeah, yeah, fine girl. Pretty, pretty. Uh, but I, I do like... Uh, Sophie Marceau. Oh, oh, wonderful. Wonderful in every way. Unbelievable. Yeah. What an actress. Did you get to meet her then? Because you're not in scenes with her. Oh, no, I, was, I, wasn't, I wasn't shooting with her. They were shooting in, in Switzerland. I wasn't in Switzerland. Oh, right. That was the shooting. Yeah. My Russia in Kazakhstan wasn't Kazakhstan. Do you know where it was? <laughs> oh, go on. 
It is uh, in Spain, the Sierra Nevada. Oh, right, okay. Uh, 20, yeah. 20 kilometers of Valencia. Oh, lovely, yeah. <laughs> and the rest we did only studio <laughs> in London. <laughs> well, I must say, your Russian accent was sensational in that yes. film. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, we, we I, I, was, I was, I was, I was, I was forced by myself to do it more. But Michael said, "No, nobody will, will understand you." <laughs> <laughs> could could you give us a quick rendition of it? We'd love to hear some of it. Sure, sure, sure. sure. Yeah. Uh, welcome to Kazakhstan, to Tarkov. It's not often people of Rostetsky come to here. <laughs> Even by the way, we go to papers with you. Really? Oh, oh my word. That is amazing, Claude. <laughs> exactly the same. Oh. Well, did, did you, how did you, did you learn any Russian or did you just learn it yourself? What happened? How did you do that? No, it's only my, my ear. I hear yeah. it up from Russians and an and actor is a, is a copy, it's a good actor, is a copy. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I can also uh, do Klaus Kinski there. If, if you you must believe me because I'm saying the truth and you can't look into my brain. And I, I've seen it. I've seen a good movie. Kinski, Kinski was doing uh, as a, a portrait uh, in, in 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 the states, and they were going to a um, zone of uh, no entrance where the, the wild animals are living. And then they were shooting something, blah, blah, blah. And suddenly a big, big policeman is coming or, or a guard from the, from the park. And, and he said, what are you doing here? And Kinski, is, he's very small. Kinski is about one meter 69 or something like that. He said, they're doing a portrait about me. I'm a film star. Who are you? Yes, the second German television. Okay. But you don't do a commercial here. No, no, it's about me. Have a good day. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a film star. Who are you? <laughs> <laughs> oh my word! So, what what happened with like uh, the publicity? To be because being in a Bond film is a completely different scale to a lot of the stuff you're happening. How how did you find that? Um, yeah, just tell us about that, really. It's really even it's not Hollywood. It's a British production, but it seems for everybody a Hollywood production. Uh, it is from another world. Yeah, um, I, I, there were all the all the other print media, the important print media, were all coming to to to. Um, my shootings and even the Spiel is the most famous magazine in Germany. Yeah, had, uh, two, two uh, journalists who were uh, forthcoming with me two weeks. It's a long time because you can't drink, you can't make a party, <laughs> you must be always alert. But um, uh, I said, Look, I tell you something the difference between a, a difference between a German and a Hollywood movie. Um, now we're going to my uh, uh, prowler. And my prowler is about seven meters. Oh, they write it down. Oh, seven meters. <laughs> so now we're going to Pierce's prowler. Went to Pierce's prowler and said, this is 15 meters. Then they said, this is high one. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, when, when you have a break, um, you got three different meals to choice, like in a star a restaurant. And even for veggies is something there. And so, yeah. And, Four o'clock. There's coming uh, something from the crew with croissants and coffee and tea. This is, it. this is Hollywood. This is, and you got a 24 hours. I got a driver with Mercedes Benz in white <laughs> yeah. to your own purpose. And this is this is Hollywood. Wow. And, um, um, and in Germany, um, the, the James Bond is. Like if you if you got by the queen, the member of of um, with the sword, member of uh, the Beatles got this. Yeah. Uh, yeah. How's it called? The the, the idolization, nobilization, or I don't know. Yeah. Id idolization, the nobility. Yeah. If you yeah. if you if you become in a knight. Yeah, yeah. Oh, knighthood. Yeah, yeah. Huh? So this is a James Bond movie for German actors. Wow. It's not, it's not, not 
um, getting higher. You can do a, a, a Stallone movie, you can do an Eastwood movie, but Bond is uh, the highest class. Bond oh. is, do you still get a lot of like um, uh, publicity? Every year, every, every year I'm in the Bond, uh, um, uh, in, 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 in the Bond um, uh, festivity in England or in America or in Australia. I was in Canada, I was in every country when the Bond yeah. conver conversion is once a year. Then we had gets wow, two years wow. pause of, of Corona, but normally I got uh, there with big, big stars. Look at my yeah, look yeah. at my um, my 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 homepage. Uh, at the last Bond uh, uh, convention, I met uh, some of the first moon uh, flyers. <laughs> oh, the moon landing! And then, and then uh, a, a real big idol of mine, um, one of the greatest boxers of all times, uh, um, and and this very crazy. If, you are there this good morning in the yeah. morning nine o'clock the doors went open and thousands of fans were coming and make meet and greet and they pay crazy sums for a photograph with you yeah yeah no, it's wow not, it's this, but this is only in the english speaking society in germany it doesn't function like this but is it how popular is james bond in germany uh, absolutely it's, it's I, I would say after the boat is James Bond. Is it? Yeah, well, you do, you've done okay then, haven't you? Come on. Yeah. <laughs> and, and were you a James Bond fan before you were no, cast in the film? No, 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 no. no. I, I told you before. The first I saw as a, as a child is Sean Connery. Mm, crazy for me. It's, 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 it's for me like uh, Barbie and Ken. Too. And then I was laughing about the fighting sequences. Of Roger Moore. Right. Yeah, all oh, right. So, yeah, fair enough. Does that wow. mean you, did you like Timothy Dalton and Daniel? No, I, not at all. And no. he, he <laughs> not at all. And he um, fierced the Eon Productions into the red, into the red uh, shifters. And they were almost uh, bankrupt after this, this um, experience, bad experience. <laughs> And Pierce made them safe again. Yeah, P first, Pierce was very uh, popular. His first performance, and then he he was climbing the, the numbers. Yeah, yeah. Our our James Bond was at this time the most popular Bond yeah, he was. of all times. But he then was very they were popular by by um, by the last I think by the last two they they were getting a bigger growth. You know, growth. Yeah, they were. Yeah. So is, is Pierce, what was he like, Pierce, to work with? Absolutely fine. He's, Irish. He's a buddy. He yeah, he's a buddy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and he can drink. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah he's cute and he's uh, a fine guy and good looking. And, and uh, I, I, I was, I was um, a bit uh, used by him as uh, a nanny to his son. Oh. Uh, because his son was third or fourth. AD and uh, he had a problem, little problem with alcohol. And so Pierce said to me, Claus, keep an eye on him. So yeah, yeah, yeah. And some some evening we were drinking, and the other day he was not able to pass to the scene. And I am like an old pro, like like um, <laughs> yeah, like one yeah. of my favorite uh, action directors, Peck and Paul. I was a yeah. pro, and in the morning Pierce asked me, Have you seen Christian? I don't know. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> At 11.30, he, he came to the set with red eyes. Oh, really? <laughs> so were there, some, were there some good evenings out with Pierce? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. yeah. Is, he, is he a Guinness man? No, he drinks no. hard things, not beer. Oh, right. Okay, right. <laughs> <laughs> We absolutely love the guy. No, Paddy is also an Irish whiskey. Not not only a nickname for Irish 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 whiskey, Paddy. Yeah, yeah. He's a proper Irishman. <laughs> and I, and I, I wanted I wanted I wanted I wanted to impose, and I said, "Oh, my daughter is called Una. It's a very seldom name in Germany." He said, oh, Una. Oh, my auntie is called Una. All right. <laughs> Irish. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Wow. 
what do you think of him as an actor? Because some people criticize him. Oh, he's brilliant. brilliant. Yeah. yeah. Brilliant. 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 It's Marlon Brando. Or, oh, uh, okay. Yeah. He's not okay. He's not that Gary level. Oakman. Gary Oakman is, is brilliant. Yeah. Oliver yeah. Reed. Oliver Reed is my favorite. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. But in the new in the new days, oh, I like him very much. Uh, uh, Ray Winston. Oh, yeah. Oh, right. Oh, yeah. oh I like him. Ooh. Classic hard man. Yeah. But uh, Piers is a pro. Yeah. Piers is mm. a pro. And he even can do, um, I've seen com com comedian movies with him. Yeah, yeah. The, 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 the Taylor from Panama, or something like that. I yeah. don't know the English title. Yeah, um, Piers is a pro through and through. Um, he's, yet, he's, he's not a great Shakespeare actor, yeah. I would say. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But he's, he's a film star, though, isn't he? <laughs> yeah, he's a film star. He's difficult. Yeah. But he 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 knows what he's doing. Yeah. And my son likes him very much. After an action sequence, uh, he was driving a tank, and after he's driving through Prague and destroying half Prague, yeah, yeah, wrecks his his. Yeah, yeah, yeah. fantastic. Yeah, he got <laughs> yeah. Well, that's brilliant. Only he could get get away with that. It's great. That's Bond. <laughs> It is Bond. It's so yeah. good. That's Bond. Yeah, it's <laughs> so good. <laughs> Who have you seen? Oh. Yeah, uh, beneath. And uh, did you know that uh, I was doing? I'm first German uh, writer, reader, actor. Call it what you want. To do John Le Carré. John Le Carré didn't want make. Uh, I was called Audible books. Didn't yeah. like yeah. it. He said no. The people should buy in a bookstore book and read them. So yeah. my company, my record company in these days, uh, wrote him a very uh, polite letter. Ah, oh, dear Mr. Carre, um, we have a fine actor here, um, Mr. Claude Rudolph, and we sent you a voice casting. And even, now it comes, even he was in the last James Bond. And oh, then yeah. Mr. Carre yeah. changes, changed his mind and said, yeah, okay, Mr. Rudolph is allowed to do my novels in German. And even, I was on tour, and he, and he made me a present. He gave me 10 performances without paying him his, his um, how's it called? Wow. Uh, his guarantees. Yeah. He made me a wow. present. 10 performances. He, he didn't want guarantees from me. My word. Good. Another and I, I, I made three big novels uh, on Audible. I made uh, the, the Night Manager. Um, a so-called yeah. hero and the th the last thing about uh, the Congo sound of sound of melody melody of sounds or something like that. Yeah, yeah. I don't know the title. Yeah, you've you've done a few audio books. Is is that quite an interesting? Uh, hundreds, part? hundreds, hundreds, hundreds. Right. Okay. Yeah. Do you, do you enjoy wow. that? You must enjoy that. Yeah. 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 yeah because people say uh, they like my voice, so yeah. I like the people. I like the people <laughs> that like me. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. When I was doing in France uh, uh, and, uh, a gangster uh, series, um, they were coming also ABC and NBC from America because it was the same time as they're shooting Dallas. And they were coming to me and they said, Ah, Claude, you are the one who loves to be hated. <laughs> <laughs> one they hate to love. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> But yeah, so you said you're casting, you just, how did it happen? I don't understand what, how did the Bond people, have they seen you in, in, in something and they like you? Yeah, yeah, don't, don't, don't believe that you were casted because of your talent or of your blue eyes. No, 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 no. Barbara uh, seeks in the, in the several countries, um, who is the one, who is the hottest guy or the hottest girl uh, in, 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 in the acting family? Uh, how are the, the 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 box offices? How is the, the television uh, right. reaction? What is the press writing about him or yeah. her? And, and and this is the trick you were casted around the world, and you see it as Barbara does it. It functions. Yeah, she's yeah. writing black chiffres, and the company is very healthy. What did you wow. think about the new Bond films? Have you, have you seen the latest one? No. I, I've said always, 
uh, have you ever seen uh, what do you what do you think about the new James Bond? Then uh, James Bond is Pierce Brosnan. You you mean the ex boy of Heike Makac? Right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> 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 well, back, oh wow! Uh, back to Michael Apted. Can you just tell us about him and what what's his like style as a director? He's correct. Like he's a gentleman, also in directing. He's strict. In Germany, you have still today some guys who are always shouting at the yeah. set and offending you, and they are stubborn like a mule. And in England, for instance. Michael is very oh sweet. yeah yeah oh yeah very polite and um, Claude, how's your Russian today? Give me some. <laughs> That's quite <laughs> a big Russian as well. Yeah. Oh, it's brilliant! So good. Thank you so much. <laughs> so good. Do you, in terms of the film, though, have you how many times have you seen the world? Is it enough? Have you have you seen it back? It comes in Germany every every week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it was on in it. Wow! It's gets now. It's coming. I don't know. It's a Bond week or something. Sixty years of Bond is now. I think. Yes. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Sixty-two. Yeah. yeah. In every program, you have Bonds, 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 right. Bonds, Bonds, Bonds. Yeah. yeah. So good. Because we, we so think it's a bit. It's quite an underrated Bond because it's. Got we, have, a... we have. We have. We uh, have. The not only at Easter or or at Christmas. The whole year we have a bond season and the boat season. Oh right! Oh, oh, wow. yeah. <laughs> yeah. And now Peter passed away. You you can't go away from the boat. In every in every television uh, uh, chain is the boat coming. Yeah. The TV version or the long version, director's version, originally version. <laughs> I saw wow. that. There's so many. There's one which is like nearly four hours, isn't there? Somewhere. Some yeah. Six hours. yeah. Oh, right. Okay. Well, yeah. Because they did it as a TV series, didn't they, as well, which you were involved yeah, in? Yeah. yeah. Incre absolutely incredible. Mm. And, that, and that's an amazing legacy that you've got for, yeah. uh, for, for you know, an actor. I mean, obviously, the boat, but for me, I think The World Is Not Enough is a very special Bond film. It's very different to a lot of them. The main reason being Sophie Marceau, like being a female villain. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and a woman. Yeah, He's yeah. Oh. Precisely, yeah. And as well that the fact that she starts as Bond's lover and, and then the twist on top of that is very different. And it's just so good over like social media over the last week to see so much praise for it. And you're a big part of that. You know, you, um, we, we just thank you for that because it's just, it's so amazing to be able to hear your stories about the world isn't enough. And even more importantly, hearing your amazing life i mean <laughs> absolutely fascinating you know it's just so good thank you I, and last story i got a, a fan letter from some of the 800 kilometers southern of new delhi from india and he wrote me now oh, you are a part of the history of the silver screen never forgotten in the life yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's it, though. It's worldwide, isn't it? It is. It absolutely yeah. is. Yeah. That's absolutely fantastic. Right. Oh. Well, thank you very much, Claude. We really thank love you. it. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Remember always, Oli Reeds, one of the greatest. Oh, he is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, dear. What a guy. Thank you very much, uh, Claude. Thank you so much, Claude. Love it. Thank you. Okay, right. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye. <laughs> see Bye -bye. you later. Ciao.